So today we're going to speak about menus of websites. Menus of websites can be super boring links. They can also be as well very boring drop downs with some more links. But menus can be also so much more. They can be super engaging and extremely user friendly. Let's have a look at some very nice examples. So one example that I like very much is the homepage of Strapi. So as you can see here, the menu is much more than just simple links. You have a drop down, they show the links, but then also description text, which can be super intuitive and helpful with some icons as well. And then you would have something like a link list here, two of them in a grid. And then even you have some preview of other websites with images. So this is pretty nice. And then of course, Tailwind has a great example for menus as well. Here you again have lists of links with icons and then also previews of, for example, other pages or blog posts, whatever it can be. So what we will build today is the foundation to implement those amazing menus, but then not only implement them in Next.js, but also have them configurable within our Strapi CMS so that content editors or even you as a developer can basically configure your menu within the headless CMS. So the one that we will create today uh, is not that fancy, but it consists all the things you need in order to achieve those menus. So we will have a menu that consists of a simple home link, but then also have a drop down, which has, as you saw, for example, on Strapi, uh, links that consists of a headline, a description and an icon. And then also you would see a preview of a blog post within that. And all of that will be configured within the Strapi CMS. So let's start with it from a conceptual perspective. So what we saw in the example that we will build, we have this menu, which is a home link. And then this content dropdown that has even more richer content. And this menu basically contains of menu items. So how we structure that in Strapi, uh, we have a menu, we can have multiple menus. So it's not that the main menu on top of the website is the only menu that can exist. You can have sub menus in a content section on a page, but also the footer, for example, is a classic example for a menu. So in Strapi, we will have menu as a collection type. So you can have multiple of those and then a menu can consist of multiple menu items. And then a menu item would have, for example, a label and a link or a reference to another page. So if that's the case, then nothing special happens. It's just this one link. But what we also have is menu items and those menu items can have components. So how we will do it is if a menu item does have components, that automatically means it will be within this dropdown, so to say. And then within that dropdown, we will dynamically render the components. So the concept should be clear now. Let's get into the Strapi backend. So here you can see I created already one menu and it has a name. So that's the identifier which we need in order to load the data also from it. And then if we go into the menu itself, it really has not much. So it just has a relation menu items to those menu items. And let's have a look into the menu items. So here's the main menu, which is also a collection type. And it also does have a name. So this name does not really play a role. So it's not needed for data loading or anything. But if you go on the collection menu items, it's sure helpful to have some internal naming so that you can identify those menu items easily. So this menu item home is just having a label. And then it has a relation to a page in order to reference the, the path of the page and then also a target, which is self. And you could also enter the URL and then, for example, have the target blank. Uh, that would then basically just be a link to another resource. But as you can see here, we did not add any components. That means it's just a simple link in the menu. So if you look now into the main content, we see we don't have a relation to a page and also no URL. We do have a target, which actually does not make uh, any difference here because it's not really used since we would open the dropdown. So the label is content and then we have those components. So we have a link list and also a page preview list. So this 
is basically what we see here. This is the link list, those two links. And this below here is the page preview list. It is called page preview list, even though it's just rendering one page preview, but the page preview list will have a spectacular future within my uh, explanations and tutorials on headless CMSs. So if you want to see that, make sure to subscribe. And also while you edit, like the video. So in the link list, we do have two links and the link always consists out of a label and then an image. And as you can see here, it can also have a description and then it should have a re reference to a page or URL, whatever. So in this case, I don't have that because that's not really the topic of this video. And then Next.js also has a label, an image and the description. And as you can see here, all of that is rendered. And then if we look into the page preview list, it just has a relation to a page or to pages. And this example just has one. So from this relation, what we get is everything we need to know about the page itself, uh, which is the preview image of the page, the title and the synopsis of the page. You can have a quick look into how that works. So a page for me always has a set title and then it does have a path. So we know where to link to with this menu item and then a synopsis which is different from the description uh, because description is more for seo purposes and synopsis is what you would preview if you for example have a block list uh, you would preview the synopsis and then we do have a preview image here so that's the data that we need and that we get in order to render this page preview here in the menu so that's it for the Strapi backend. So that's how the structure of the menu is implemented actually in the backend. So now we go into the Next.js frontend and we will see how we get the data and then also how we render it. So let's first look into where our menu actually lives. And for that, we look into the app folder and then into locale and Slack. If you are curious about the general structure, I talked about that a bit more in the last video. So I won't go too deeply into this right now. So we do have a layout here. And then within the layout, what we can see is this logo image, but that's not yet the menu. Also the name, also part of the logo. But then here you can see there is the menu component and the menu component takes the main menu as data. So the website data we get from this function. It's an async function within our server component and uh, this fetches the data. It's just fetching general website data. So if you look into that function, what we see here is it's mostly just a, a client request using GraphQL as I always do. And the query for that is get website data and the get website data query as usual, it's structured in GraphQL and then in queries. And here we have the query for get website data. So the query looks like this. We do query all the menus, but we filter them for the name main. And then we just want to have one because there should only exist one. And then for the data of the menus, we use a fragment because I structure everything into fragments. And the menu fragment that we have, we do have that under uh, collections because menu is a collection in Strapi. And here you can see we get the menu items and then from the menu items, we have some Strapi specific data schema like data and ID and then attributes. And then from each menu item, we would want to have the label, the target, the URL, the page, which again is a fragment because it is a relation, has some uh, specific data structure. And then also we get the components and the components again is a union type. So we basically say, okay, we want to have all the components for that, for this menu item. And then if the component is of type component navigation link list, we want to have those properties of this. And then in case it is a component content page preview list, we want to have the data fields, which is defined in the page preview list fragment. But as you can see here, if you want to be able to have more different types of components being configurable in the Strapi backend for a menu item, you would always just add the definition for the data that you need for the component type you added. Uh, so this is pretty extensible and also quite, quite nice to maintain. 
So we will have, for ex as an example, look into the linked list fragment, which is one component. In the linked list fragment we have in navigation, and there's the linked list fragment. It has simply a headline and then an array of links, and then the data of the links we have defined in the link fragment. And this is what we would expect, the label, the description, an image, URL target, and the page reference. So this is more or less exactly as the data is defined within Strapi. Um, we would uh, define the queries accordingly and get all the data that we need within our GraphQL query. So then we get the response back and we have the, the menu. And I also, as you can see here, have something that's called global. Uh, we don't go too deep into what the global is, but it's essentially just global information for the website as it's as a whole. For example, the logo image would be part of this global settings of the whole website. So now we get the website data and then within that we have the main menu. And the cool thing about using GraphQL with Strapi is everything is really nicely typed. So the main menu data then goes into our menu component. So just as a disclaimer, the code is actually completely not optimized for mobile. That will come but should not be the purpose of this video. So the menu takes the menu items, and then if there are no menu items, then we just return an empty fragment because there's nothing to show. And then if we have menu items, what we use is a popover group. Uh, so this is coming from headless UI. That's what I use most of the time for interfaces. And then we would run through all menu items we map them and then for each menu item we would render a menu item component so the menu itself also does not do that much and then what i also do here which might seem a bit strange is uh, to have the option to extend the menu itself by some custom code so it does not have to be that the whole menu is only configurable within Strapi, but you can also directly in code extend the menu. But we will have a look into this in more details in a later video. So let's look into the menu item. So the menu item then also takes the properties. Actually, what is pretty neat is that we do have the typings here as well. So the menu item is completely generated from our GraphQL schema. So the component is, is very easily to be typed. And then what we have here is this if statement. And this is basically the distinction where we would say, okay, it's just a simple text link. If it does have an href, uh, then we just render the text link. Uh, that's basically what we see here as the home link. But then if we don't have that, because we defined some components, it gets a bit more involved. We have this popover, popover button, which is the trigger to open it. All that is basically standard headless UI components. So if you are more interested in how to work with them, uh, there's a pretty good documentation on that. And then we would have our panel that's opening. And then here we go again into our headless specifics. We do have our component renderer. And the component renderer I talked a bit more in my last video. So check that out if you are interested how that works. But basically what the component renderer does is it takes all the components that we uh, have as data loaded, which in our case is the linked list and the page preview. And then it has a component map. And the component map more or less just maps the type of the component to an actual React component. And then if we look into the component map, we would find the ones that we use. Here's the component navigation linked list which uses the linked list component. And then there's also a component content page preview list. And this component content page preview list typically would render a page preview list component. But since the page preview list, as I said earlier, has a pretty bright future, it is used in different ways. So it can also be used on a normal content page, for example, to uh, have a section where you would say, okay, here are some more or related uh, blog posts, for example. That's also what the page preview list would be used for. So that means the page, the default page preview list UI component is not very well suited to be used within the context of a menu. So what we can do then is to 
override this field in the component map to basically say, okay, in this context, the component renderer should not use the default component map, but instead for the page preview list, we use a special page preview list, which is the menu page preview list. So this menu page preview list takes exactly the same schema and the same data because it also is previewing different pages, but the UI is a bit different because the context is in a menu different than, for example, on the website. And that's more or less all the magic that, that's to it. Uh, as you can imagine, you can change the layout within the popover panel uh, here and then make sure that the component renderer renders everything. But you could also, for example, if needed for layout purposes, have uh, in the map, for example, a different wrapper around a component um, that would allow you to further uh, define different layouts uh, or whatever you want to do. So essentially with that tactic, you would be able to also come up with those fancy and really nice menus, but then especially also be able to empower editors to create and change those menus, which I think is essential for websites. It's good to just implement them in, in the code, but it's actually much better but also a bit more difficult to enable other people to exactly implement those menus as you as a designer or developer want that to be. Yeah, so that's it for this video. I really hope that you got something out of it. If that's the case, please consider to subscribe and like. And as always, Dankeschön und bis zum nächsten Mal.